Would you be the jerk for criticizing your girlfriend's spending behavior? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for telling my in-laws they shouldn't blame me when they ignored my friendly warnings? My in-laws moved back in June. They'd been planning this move for several months and had their house up on the market before they told my husband, 24-year-old male, and me, 23-year-old female. They had mentioned the name of a small town they liked and were considering their number one choice of location. I know the place well because it's my hometown, and I fled right as I was turning 17 and never went back there. There are zero happy memories of my hometown for me. I was raised in one of those families, the ones that are the talk of everyone in town for all the wrong reasons. I'm the only member of my family, dad, mom, brother, who did not go to prison or get in trouble with the law. But people still hated me because of who my family was. Growing up there was heck, and the one friend I had back then got a lot of crap for being friends with me. Teachers treated her like crap, she was thrown under the bus alongside me many times. Even her family gave her crap for being friends with me. When all three family members were arrested together, I decided I just needed to run away and get far from there, or I'd live in literal heck until I turned 18, and I knew it would happen. My in-laws always knew I came from a family that got in trouble with the law a lot. They also knew I had a bad reputation where I came from as a result. They didn't know my hometown until that came up when they mentioned their move and I gave them a friendly heads up or warning that living there and making their association to me known would not be a great idea, that they would likely be treated poorly as a result. My husband suggested there were so many other places they could look at, but his parents had their hearts set. My husband and I worried for his much younger siblings who were all still in school. I knew most, if not all, my past teachers would still be there but I had hoped that they wouldn't be too open about me. They moved in June. By August, they had mentioned me to some people or some people had seen photos of me and my husband in their home. And when my siblings' in-laws started school, it wasn't great. They found it hard to make friends. One brother-in-law was denied a place on the football team. Parents don't want their kids associating with them. They also noticed neighbors are less friendly. They don't get the same chit-chat they liked when they first moved. And they heard a lot of hate about my family the kids especially. And now, my in-laws, by this I mean my husband's parents, are mad at me and they acted like I didn't warn them. I reminded them that I did give them a friendly warning and they couldn't say I didn't, so they shouldn't blame me. My husband had my back on that and told them the same. They told me I shouldn't be saying any I told you so's when my husband's siblings are negatively impacted. The funny slash sad part is my husband's siblings aren't mad. It just made them sad for me. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk on honestly multiple fronts. One, they did warn them. They were pretty clear about how they were raised, how the people there treated them, and likely what the outcome would be. And they're also not the jerk in the sense that they can't control all these people who, when they move there, do treat them that way. It's not like it's OP's direct responsibility or influence that is forcing them to act that way. Kinky President commented, not the jerk. You can't help the circumstances here. It's very unfortunate though. People are the worst. They should give you a chance, especially being the only one to have never been arrested. By the way, why are so many people marrying so young? I feel like I didn't know my butt from my elbow at 23 compared to now and I'm only 4 years older. OP responded saying, for sure they can. Some are wonderful. But I found there are certain mindsets that set in when you're from a smaller town. Reputation can do way more harm and people are less likely to give you a fair shot if you're from one of those bad egg families. In my case, doing pretty well in school until my junior year, my grades went to crap then, didn't do me any good. Can't speak for everyone, but I think I had to grow up in some ways a lot younger, and in order to get through everything, I had to be an adult before some others. So when I fell in love with my husband and we'd lived together through COVID, we knew we wanted to be married to each other. We didn't do anything huge though, just us, his family, and some friends. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for lying to my family about the gender of my baby? I am 11 weeks pregnant with our third child. We have two boys already, two and four. Both sides of grandparents don't know we're pregnant yet, and we found out today that our third will be a girl via MIPT testing, which is over 99% accurate. This would be very exciting for both sets of grandparents, but we are considering telling them all that we're pregnant with our third boy instead. The reasons are, my mother-in-law literally yelled, no, when we told her the gender of our second boy, having kept the first a secret. She's also told me multiple times I need to give her a granddaughter and thus far I've told her she gets what she gets and doesn't get upset, and that if she wanted a girl she should have had it instead of just having one boy, my husband. 
We know that mother-in-law will start sending clothes. She lives in a different country to us as soon as she finds out. She even sent girl clothing hopefully for our first not knowing he was a boy. And we are conscious of how our two boys will feel about things arriving for the new baby and not them. The sending wouldn't be as extreme for a third boy as we already have lots of boy stuff. I want to avoid the drama and upset of mother-in-law treating the unborn baby girl more favorably than she did my boys. She already shows extreme favoritism to her favorite niece over other girls and boys in the family and sees nothing wrong with it. We want to avoid mother-in-law coming to our country for the birth. She came a few months later for our boys. As we want to get settled and think if it's a girl, she'll want to come ASAP. Our eldest was born code blue and required resuscitation, and before him we had a miscarriage and I'm worried about the added pressure on me to give birth to the first granddaughter from our parents. We think it would be really exciting once she's born if she's a big surprise for both sides, as she will be the first granddaughter on both sides. We can't say we don't know because we're both type A, and they know we would know, and we did with the first two too. We're worried though by telling our parents she's a boy, when she isn't, that they will buy gendered clothing though, or that they'll be mad at us for lying for six months. Is this coming to backfire on us? Would we be the jerks? Any advice would be appreciated. Update. Okay, Reddit has spoken and we've agreed hubby is not allowed to surprise his mum. We will be saying we don't know and addressing any hopes for a girl with a request to stop pressuring us to have a girl and that we better not witness any gender disappointment if it's a boy and if it's a girl, we better not see a different reaction or treatment than to the boys ever. This message will be consistently delivered everyone worrying about trauma to our boys. We're very good in addressing behaviors and setting boundaries with anyone in contact with our kids, and we will set clear expectations and boundaries on the first phone call once she's born. These will be strictly enforced. Thanks for your concern and input. I do think I maybe worded this post a bit more seriously than it would have been. The parents would have been like, you sneaky rats, and have been happy, but I don't want them to spread the lie wider, so we'll just share the unbelievable lie instead and try to throw them off every chance we get. We were also very shocked at how many people said we were lying about knowing the gender so early. We're very lucky to live in a country with affordable and accessible healthcare, and feel so grateful that NIPT is so available to us. Thanks again all, especially those who stayed kind. So it goes without saying, but lying about it, probably not the best idea. I definitely wouldn't think OP's a monster for lying about not knowing and essentially pounding the point that you're going to have to treat our kids the same regardless of gender. I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to say to your family members. Trevina Ice commented, Info, why not just say, hey, we're not telling anyone the gender because of the way some people reacted by our second baby. So yeah, you will find out when the baby is there, and then let everyone else think if this means it's a girl, a boy, or twins. Lying could lead to a bad start for your little girl, as people could be upset and do you really want some family to cut you out after finding out you lied to them for 8 months? So don't say anything. OP responded saying they definitely wouldn't cut us out, it wouldn't be that extreme at all. But I get what you're saying, not telling them just means we have 6 months of people trying to trip us up. Our next story is, am I the jerk for kicking my uncle out of his house? I, 23 year old male, was very close to my grandfather who passed away last year. He left me his entire estate, including the house after my grandma divorced him. Before he passed, my grandma had asked him to let her son, my uncle, 50 year old male, not biologically related to my grandfather, rent the house. They set up a three year contract for $1,800 a month and at the end he could buy the house for $377,000. The contract ends this November. After a lengthy probate process, the house is now officially in my name. My uncle asked if I'd extend the contract because of the high interest rates, but I didn't want to. I'm hoping to buy my own home soon. My grandma pressured me saying, it's family, so I reluctantly agreed to extend it for three more years. While I was waiting for a new contract to be drafted, my uncle asked if he could start construction on the house. I said no, but then a friend of mine who was doing the work told me that my uncle had already started construction without my permission. I went to check it out, and sure enough, major work had been done without permits. I confronted him and he denied it until I showed him photos. He claimed it was his house and that he could do what he wanted. Later, during a family holiday, my uncle and his girlfriend ambushed me proposing a 5 year contract with lenient rent terms, no restrictions on construction, and permission to sublet. I refused and said I'd have my lawyer draft the contract instead. 
During probate, my uncle and his girlfriend discussed what they would prefer contract-wise that it was left more open-ended. I continuously listened to their wants. However, I told them in the end that I would send them a contract drafted by my lawyer once the house was in my name. A few months later, my uncle, his girlfriend, and my grandmother sent me the five-year contract they had proposed during the family holiday. I firmly declined. My grandmother then called and berated me for not signing, claiming that if it weren't for her, I wouldn't have inherited anything for my grandpa. At that point, I lost my temper and said, you have to be freaking kidding me. She responded, your grandpa would be disappointed in you for using that language with me. I replied, don't use my grandpa against me, and hung up. Since then, my grandma and uncle have cut me off. I had my lawyer draft a new contract three years, no subletting, and a clause requiring my approval for construction. The rest of the original contract for my grandpa is the same. Now, my uncle is saying that he can only qualify for $350,000 instead of the $377,000 he owes, and my family is pressuring me to accept the lower offer, accusing me of forcing him out. Am I the jerk for refusing his contract, insisting he pay the full $377,000, signing my contract, or moving out and standing my ground despite family pressure? I do think on a personal level, OP's not the jerk. Unfortunately, there's going to be clearly a subset of his family that are going to be extremely livid with OP if they go through with this, but I feel like you almost have to be impartial about this because while everybody would love to bring up, oh, grandpa this, grandpa that, theoretical, you wouldn't have it if it weren't for me, blah, blah, blah. Grandpa's not here. It's not grandpa's property, it's OP's property. If OP wants to pivot, if OP wants to tear it down and they have a legal right to do so, I mean, are they genuinely the jerk for doing so? Let alone the fact that all of this pressure is being put on them to capitulate and give up extra things. Diminishing patients commented, not the jerk. My grandma pressured me saying, it's family. So are you, your family, but they don't care about that. I confronted him and he denied it until I showed him photos. My uncle and his girlfriend ambushed me. My grandmother then called and berated me. That's what you're dealing with. You're better off without them. Our next story is, am I the jerk for taking kids to dinner when my wife had left food out for them? I picked up my 3 and 5 year up from daycare on a night that my wife had to take our 12 year old to a practice. They were hungry when I picked them up and I knew they'd like to go to dinner instead of going home. Once at the restaurant, I saw a text from my wife that she had made them plates before she left the house. It was too late to change plans, so we stayed and ate. The dinner she had made was a pretty basic, but it was dinner nonetheless. When my wife got back home, I told her I saw her text just a few minutes too late and we ate out. She flipped out on me for wasting her time. I told her I didn't intend to waste her time, but that didn't matter. What I did was rude. Am I rude for this? Am I a jerk? I really hope most people wouldn't find OP being the jerk here. Could there have been better communication on either side? Absolutely, but it was just an honest mistake. Like legitimately, unless you're really strapped for cash, this should almost be something that's like a you laugh at and agree in the future, we're gonna ask each other if we have made anything. Shansu commented, What are we doing for dinner is a discussion pretty much every family has, pretty much every day, especially once kids start doing after school activities. If you don't currently do that, perhaps you should start. I don't think you're the jerk here for not dragging your kids away from the restaurant once you were already there, but this feels a lot like you just wanted to treat your kids and didn't care about what was planned at home. It feels really off what your wife and 12 year old were doing for dinner never came into this whole thing. New Assumption 3836 added, also it was pretty basic. So? She had to spend time on it, and he definitely wasn't sorry as he's on Am I the Jerk trying to get sympathy. He doesn't care he wasted her time because he doesn't value her contribution. If it were me, I'd let him start cooking more since the effort is wasted on him anyway. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my sister that if she wants to give second chances to people, then she should put her own neck on the line? My sister Zoe is nice to a fault. She gives others second chances, but she's too trusting with the people that she gives second chances to, and it winds up having consequences for whichever family member Zoe convinces to stick their neck out for. My grandparents were talking about needing a cleaner, and Zoe asked them to hire a friend, Ash. After several months, my grandparents learned that Ash had been pocketing my grandma's jewelry. Zoe had recommended Ash's cleaning service for our grandparents' friends, and now we suspect that she's stolen from them too. Zoe made an excuse that Ash was a good person, but that she had a bad home life and only took the jewelry because she's trying to get away from her parents. My grandparents were not amused and said Ash was lucky because that was the only reason they didn't report her. 
Later, Zoe recommended a friend Lily as a babysitter for our brother's son, Max. According to Max, Lily was on her phone the whole time, and Max was on his own for dinner. Max claims that Lily was actually mean to him, and my nephew isn't the type to make up something like that. Zoe made an excuse that Lily's boyfriend broke up with her, and she's a good person but just having a hard time. I rolled my eyes at how a good person would ever feel better about herself by being mean to a child. Michael was obviously ticked at Zoe for recommending Lily. Zoe kept trying to push me to talk to him and agree that she was right. I eventually got fed up and told Zoe how I get she wants to give people second chances, but no one she recommends is ever trustworthy, and she should try putting her own neck on the line so she'll get why we're so annoyed with taking the consequences of her kindness, and then her coming and trying to make us agree that she did a good thing. After that, our parents reached out to me. They said that they understood me and Michael being frustrated, and they would talk to Zoe about being naive, but she was trying to do a good deed. And I should apologize to her because, no matter the circumstance, it's a crummy thing to put down a person who had the best of intentions. One could argue that this is none of our parents' business, as we're all adults now, but our parents typically stay out of our business. This is only one of the times our parents had gotten involved in any of our disagreements, so now I'm torn if I should apologize or hold my ground. Personally, I say hold your ground. This is not a situation where you need to apologize in any way to her, and especially considering OP's on the outside of this, they're objectively not a person that needs to apologize for saying what they see here. Apologize for what? Giving their honest opinion on the circumstances? Okay, apologize to her, but do it in the false way of, I'm sorry that I told you what I personally see as the truth. Archetyping 101 commented, not the jerk. It sounds like Zoe has to believe these things or make excuses because she doesn't have trustworthy, reliable friends, and that's actually sad as freak. Doesn't excuse what they did at all. If she had to admit her friends made poor choices, maybe she's worried she has no good friends, which I don't think she has. You're not wrong. She can keep these friends, but also acknowledge what they did was crappy and illegal, stealing jewelry. Zoe is welcome to have Ash clean her house, and for Zoe to donate her jewelry if she'd like. But Zoe should absolutely be responsible to tell others that her recommendations have had issues to give them a heads up. An example is I had a bad tradesperson who I used. I'd referred him out to many people. I didn't know he was shady until something happened. I immediately called every person I referred him to, explained what he did, and told them to stop using him or to be careful. I felt that was my responsibility since it's my referral. No excuses. Snowflower commented, I hope Ash returned the jewelry because if not, the grandparents have every right to report her to the police. Zoe's crappy for letting her grandparents get robbed and recommending a bad babysitter and putting her nephew at risk. Hopefully the whole family stops listening to Zoe and her recommendations. Our next story is, am I the jerk for uninviting my brother from my wedding? I, 29-year-old female, am getting married in a few months, and I've been working hard to make it a special day for everyone involved. My brother, 31-year-old male, has always been very active in local politics, which has led to some heated family debates. He's currently running for a local office, and while I support his ambitions, his constant political talk has been a source of tension in our family. Last week, during my bridal shower, my brother took it upon himself to make a surprise announcement. In the middle of the event, he gave an impromptu speech about his political campaign, complete with campaign slogans and a request for donations. The atmosphere immediately shifted from celebratory to uncomfortable. Guests were visibly confused and annoyed and some even left early. After the event, I told my brother that his stunt was inappropriate and that I couldn't have him turning my wedding into a political platform. I explained that I wanted the day to be about love and celebration, not political agendas. I asked him to either keep politics out of the wedding or to not attend. My brother is furious, claiming that I'm trying to suppress his voice and that I'm being unreasonable. Our parents are also upset, saying that I'm being unfair and should accommodate his campaign because it's important to him. I'm feeling conflicted because I don't want to create a rift in the family, but I also don't want my wedding to become a political event. Am I the jerk for uninviting my brother for my wedding after his political announcement at my bridal shower? OP's definitely not the jerk here. I think it is so ridiculous for the brother to say, you're trying to suppress my voice. No, I'm trying to have a wedding, an event specifically designed to be all about the people getting married and just that alone. 
this isn't really a venue where you're supposed to have a voice. Nobody is expected to have this platform. There is no political grandstanding expected to be going on at this wedding. Just like someone at their wedding wouldn't want somebody to use that venue as a way to propose to their partner and thereby stealing the thunder or getting an entire focus away from you and your spouse, they wouldn't in any way endorse you using somebody else's wedding venue as a platform to announce your political campaign. And it's especially obvious in the fact that they had to do it out of nowhere and just have this impromptu thing. They weren't and were never asking for permission because they know they would get shot down on it if they did. Kate Capella commented, Not the jerk. There's a time and place for most things. But your bridal shower was not the place for this. Disappointed that your parents weren't on your side for this. If you really want to reinvite your brother to your wedding, I would do the following. Tell him that if he does any sort of political campaigning, he will be thrown out, and you are not kidding around. If he does, get security to throw him out. Warn your parents about this so that they know the deal. Highly Improbable 42 commented, I should accommodate his campaign because it's important to him. Why is his campaign more important than your wedding? Make a fake headline and send it to them. Golden Child's son hijacks sister's wedding events to demand campaign contributions. Not the jerk. You deserve to be surrounded by people who love and respect you at your wedding. And any day, really. Your brother and parents are demonstrating they're not capable of that. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my mother-in-law she made her bed so lay in it? My husband and I are in our early 30s, married for a few years but together for 11. Throughout this time we often argue due to my in-law's behavior, but specifically mother-in-law. There are many examples I could make, but to sum it up, she's been controlling not only to my husband, but also me. Even going as far as pressuring my husband to make me do what she wanted regarding situations that didn't concern her at all disrespectful towards me, overall invasive and demanding, you name it. The only thing she has not done is directly insult me to my face. I kept telling my husband I was over their behavior and to put a stop to it, but he never really acted decisively, so mother-in-law never really stopped. Time after time I would put up a happy front and bite my tongue to not cause drama, but because everything just keeps piling up, I'm always on the verge of blowing up whenever I'm around them. I told my husband I'd like to limit contact at least for a while, but he insists we go visit. My husband's also aware of how much I'm affected by this. Anyway, we meet up and mother-in-law starts with her usual antics. I stay quiet until I've had enough and start talking back to her. I didn't insult her, but I wouldn't let anything slide like I usually do and highlighted every inappropriate or invasive comment. She surprised and asks me what came on to me. I never acted like this and so on. In a fit of rage, I wasn't yelling and I spoke calmly and slowly, but my emotional state was crystal clear. You couldn't mistake it for a lighthearted remark. I told her she's been disrespecting me for years, and this is what she's getting now, and she made her bed, so she should just lay in it. Things got tense, and we left. I'm upset, but finally feel liberated for standing up for myself. Husband seems torn. Mother-in-law is obviously livid. Husband has now said that he agrees and understands my emotional state on the matter, but also wants to keep the peace and to just apologize. I refused and said I would only be open to revisit the relationship if I see some change in effort to at least be cordial and mutually respectful. And I absolutely will not apologize for anything I said because I mean it and would do it again. I reminded him that he had many chances to stand up to them and that I also said no one involved would enjoy it if I had to stand up for myself and he never took me seriously. I also said I never insulted her or yelled at her. So apologizing for my reaction to her comments sounds incredibly backwards. Am I the jerk for what I said and for not budging on this? I don't think OP's the jerk here, but I'm struggling to understand how their husband can't see what's going on here. I mean, he really can't play both sides like that, can he? Him saying, listen, I know what you're going through, I see your points, I hear you. Also, you should apologize. Like, can you lie a little bit more to OP's face if you're gonna say apologize to your mother-in-law? Howell Penn commented, not the jerk for this moment, but you've been treating yourself poorly for years by staying with a man who is willing to sit by silently while you're being treated disrespectfully, and asks you to take the poor treatment to keep the peace. Why did you marry him before this got resolved? At least at this point you don't have kids. If he does want kids, then find a good counselor and insist on establishing boundaries with the in-laws before you bring a baby into this toxic family. 
Our next story is, am I the jerk for not going to my friend's wedding after what she said to me? A few months ago, a friend of mine told me she was getting married. It wasn't meant to be a regular wedding, but more of an elopement kind of thing. We were supposed to be her, the groom, me as a maid of honor, and a best man, plus a few close family members, about 10 people in total, and it was planned for early November. I say wedding like that in the title because there will be no invites, no save the date, no ceremony, no walk down the aisle, just courthouse and dinner. That comes from the bride herself, I'm not guessing anything. A week ago I got the news that I'd gotten a permanent job. I don't know how to explain it because this is a very typical thing for my country, Spain, where every so often, the government will hire professionals to work either in the administration or in public institutions, education, high school. This is usually a great opportunity because these positions are for life, well, until you retire, and they can never fire you. In order to apply for these positions, you have to take an exam, and then depending on your years of service to the institution and the score you get on the exam, you can get one of those jobs. Long story short, I took my exam last year, and last week, I got told that I got one of the jobs, but I will be moving cities for that. When I told my friend this, the only thing she said is, when are you leaving? Can you still come to my wedding? No congratulations, no I'm happy for you, nothing. I must add, two weeks ago I talked to her to know where we were having dinner for her wedding and she said she didn't have anything planned yet, let alone booked. Had she told me she had everything booked and that she really needed my RSVP, I would have understood her answer. But in that context, I've decided that if the only thing she cares about is her and her wedding and she can't be happy for me, I'm not going to the wedding. Am I the jerk? I feel like OP maybe is being a little nuclear here. Would it have absolutely have been nice for your friend to say, Oh my god, that's amazing! Are you looking forward to it? Are you nervous? Do you not want to move cities? I think at the same time you have to understand the most important thing in that person's life pretty much is probably their wedding. Getting married is probably just about the only thing they're really kind of penciling in on their internal schedule. Plus, it's something that when they think of you, they probably kind of associate you with. You're an important part of their wedding. You're the maid of honor. Do they have like a history of mistreating you or not caring about you, your personal life? Is it worth just blowing the friendship up over? Aurora Sexy commented, you're the jerk. While your friend's reaction may have seemed dismissive, it's possible she was caught up in the stress of wedding planning and didn't fully process your big news. Weddings, even small ones, can be overwhelming, and she likely values your presence on such an important day. Instead of immediately deciding not to attend, you should have communicated how you felt about her response. Friendship is a two-way street, and it's important to express your feelings rather than make assumptions. Canceling your role as maid of honor because of one comment comes across as self-centered and could hurt your friendship in the long run. Talking it out would have been a better approach. This next story is, am I the jerk for criticizing my girlfriend's spending behavior? My girlfriend comes from a well-off family, but they're not necessarily super rich. They just have a small construction company with around 100 to 200 employees. However, her spending behavior since we've been dating has been enormous. For instance, she will often spend 10,000 on a single trip to a boutique like Hermes or Louis Vuitton. The other thing is that she enjoys luxury vacations. Last year, she spent around 100,000 on these vacations. It's also not that I'm jealous. For instance, she's gifted me a Cartier Santos watch even though I didn't ask for it or anything. I just told her I feel she should be more conscious of her spending behavior and why does she need to go to places where one night costs $10,000? I'm sure you can find rooms that are almost as good in other places for a few hundred dollars. It just seems so unnecessary to me and it's building bad habits to spend too much money on things that are not at all necessary. It would be better to invest the money or found a business with it or something like that. But when I brought it up, she claimed that I should lighten up and that spending a bit of money was not such a big deal. She claimed that I was probably just not used to it because I grew up poor, even though I didn't. My father is a pilot and my mother works at a library and can't relate to the lifestyle. Am I the jerk? I just feel it's so unnecessary and frivolous. Now, if it concerns you on a personal level as far as seeing a long-term future with a person like that, I understand that. But in a situation where you're just the boyfriend, I don't know if it's truly fair for OP to be going to the girlfriend and criticizing their spending like that, especially when the girlfriend clearly kind of suggests, hey, I have no problem with it, 
I want to do it and I'm probably going to keep doing so. On a inner personal level, you can criticize it, you can think this is not the right kind of behavior for me, but outwardly saying that to them probably puts you more in the you're the jerk category than not the jerk, even if it does seem like a crazy level of spending. IMTA always commented, you're the jerk, you are a boyfriend, not a husband. It is not your money and yes, this reeks of jealousy. You do not get to control her money, time or decisions. How she spends her money is up to her. Leave her to her luxuries if you can't handle it. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy am I the jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.